Very, when you reflect on that, still on these measures being put in place, and like um, Philip says, that yes, uh, you may want to pull away uh, the consumption subsidies, but also have targeted approach. How are Kenyans supposed to survive? Waiting for the crop, which is appearing to be, it's going to be disappointing. The meteorologist department, the meteorological department are saying that uh, the rains will largely be depressed in the coming long rain season. What are we doing? No, that's the, that's the iron of it all. Like we said, the thought is about relieving Kenyans from the hard economic times by subsidizing production of food. Another problem is that we are not changing tactic. We're being told there's no rain. There's no rain. So in other words, this will not work. We're being told that indirectly. But then we are still going ahead with it. And to make the matters worse, you've just sent the the least favorable way of uh, having this subsidy. So there are two ways you can do it. You can do a targeted subsidy, like they're saying, or you can do a universal subsidy. They have chosen a universal subsidy. All farmers, the rich and the poor. And what does the evidence say? Evidence has shown that when subsidies are universal, usually appropriation or allocation of the actual uh, product is by political connections and social standing. Those who are polit politically connected, those who are better social standing, they have got more bargaining power and they tend to acquire most of the product. And so what, you are, what has happened through and what we know through evidence and research done is that now the rich farmers are going to be in a better position to access. And those are the rich farmers who could have afforded mm -hmm. fertilizers which are not subsidized. Mm -hmm. So there's a market distortion in a big way, meaning that the poor farmers may not, because the point is the government cannot satisfy the demand for fertilizers. So the poor farmers who really need the subsidies may not get it. And there is the risk of diversion into the local markets to be sold. These poor farmers are likely are, like, are going to be buying the same fertilizer. I know they are saying, oh, we are registering farmers to control for leakages. But the truth is, uh, you cannot deal with the conflict of interest. A farmer can be a trader. If they are well connected, they get more. They'll find ways of getting that into the market. Mm -hmm. So now this is a downfall <laughs> of this. So in other words, uh, we can see even from research in Malawi has done a lot of research. We have had a targeted subsidy before. We don't know how that went in, ter in, in terms of uh, evaluation of, of its impact on the economy. But for sure, now that we, we are not yet food secure, it seems like things, something didn't work well there. So the point is, um, these subsidies that the government is having is not likely to work, unfortunately. First is, in the first place, it's exclusive. It excludes those who are not going to get the rainfall. And secondly, it is still going to be exclusive because the poor are not likely to access it because it's universal. And when the bargaining comes in, they've got lesser bargaining power and they're, and they're going to be left out. So the point is, why don't we think about uh, a more inclusive approach to subsidizing production? Why is nobody talking about technology, technology-driven agriculture and subsidized technology and help farmers learn technological ways of production? Today, you don't need a lot of water to rain on your farm to grow food crops. And there are a lot of examples in the world. There's a lot of that technology in small scale in this country, which can be scaled up. Why don't we look into scaling up agricultural production technologies and subsidize those ones? Because they are more viable than subsidizing rain-fed agriculture. It will not get us anywhere because the rain is not coming, and it will not come because we prayed for it or because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, to not come, it was not going to come. Let me just end it at that. Let me just end it at that. <laughs> Excuse me, I hear you. Um, 